Buzz, yep. stop for a minute, son. We have a Corvette in the house. It's good, isn't it? It is great. But there are loads of cracks under yeah, the surface. But it's I mean, going to be a big body job. Do you know what? Body work, not a problem here. I want to have a look underneath. Get it up, yeah? Yes, cracked and crazed paintwork holds no fear for the boys. Massive structural problems, however. Uh, That's another story. What? Right, question. Tell me how big the gap was here, bottom of the A-post. I know about five, six mil or something like that. That is absolutely massive. That's an inch. You can get that. your hand in that. Let's get it up and see what we can see underneath it. That is bad. It feels like the, the nose cone of this car wants to fall off. Plus, I'm actually quite scared to get underneath this car, if I'm honest. Really? Well, look at the state of that. The car's trying to break in half. Tim might well be nervous. With getting on for one and a half metric tons of Corvette bending in the middle, it could be a bit of a health and safety issue. I want to show you how bad this is, right? OK. Check this out. Yeah. All right, OK, I'm watching. In OK. Place. Right. Intact biscuits. All right. What's going to happen when that hits the deck? Crushed. Not for the first time, the boys are facing a car that might look, at first glance, like it just needs a bit of spit and polish, but is in fact a great big four-wheeled can of American automotive worms. This could be absolutely catastrophic. This is structural stuff. We found a load of rot at the bottom of this crucial A-post. This is where a lot of the car's strength is actually derived from. So what we need to do is put the strength back in at this point here. This will all have to be reconstructed with fresh steel. But it's not all bad news. The rust is localised to the A-post and Fuzz thinks he can fix it without having to cut the whole car in half although it's still going to need major surgery. If we're going to weld that, we've got to get this fibreglass out of the way. We're going to have to cut all the way down here and remove this fibreglass, and then we'll be able to get to the steel structure beneath safely, weld in some new, fresh steel, and then we'll have to grab all this back in. Yes, if you have a fibreglass-bodied car at home, this next bit might make you wince. Right, there we have it. It's brutal, but at least it exposes everything that we need to see to be able to repair this car. What came in as a complete car is now turning into what looks like a pile of scrap. Repairing fiberglass is one of the great mysteries of classic car restoration. Now, there's no need for it to be that much of a mystery, but what there is need for is lots of patience because it takes plenty of time to do this. This entire section has been bracketed in using these steel brackets and screws. Corvettes are one of the few fiberglass body production cars made in America. It's light, strong and rust-proof, but it's also a really fiddly business to repair. It doesn't look very pretty, and it isn't, actually. I've gone through in a couple of little areas, so I'm going to have to glass all of that up as well. So I'm going to pour a bit of resin over these strips of fibreglass, and that resin will go rock hard in just a few minutes. So I've got to work with reasonable speed now. So I've got all my fibreglass on. Now what I have to do is roller it to get all the air out. You can see lots of little bubbles in there. We're going to have to build up a few other layers as well. It's easier said than done. I have made a terrible mess of this. Never mind, Fuzz. You can always rub down your mistakes and start again. We need to let this set, grind it back, smooth it off, and then we can get it ready for painting after that. Right, 